UCLA is a university with unlimited possibilities for students that desire world-class academics and research. Unmatched diversity, incredible cultural and social opportunities, successful alumni and career networking, first-class campus facilities, plus America's top intercollegiate sports teams. Located in Westwood, just a few miles from the Pacific Ocean, UCLA's one square mile campus is surrounded by famous cities such as Bel Air, Beverly Hills, Brentwood, and Santa Monica. Hi everybody and welcome to Westwood for UCLA Bruin Talk. This is Allison Taylor, I'm Dave Marcus, and we're pleased to have you with us. We'll talk about golf and then we'll talk about the hardwood. Before we meet our first guest, let's take a look at the upcoming events. The newest member of the UCLA coaching family is no stranger to the Westwood campus. He earned four varsity letters as a member of the golf team. Now he's back as an assistant golf coach. Brandon Christensen, welcome to UCLA Bruin Talk. Oh, thanks for having me. Welcome back to campus. I'm excited to be here. How's it feel coming back after a couple years in a, in a completely different role? Um, it's, it's extremely exciting. Um, just walking around campus and being back here and looking around and seeing all the things that I saw a few years ago and seeing the improvements that have been made to the campus and um, seeing some old faces and seeing some new ones. It's, it's exciting. It's, it's a little overwhelming, but it's, but it's great and it's fun to be back. You had a real different path than a lot of coaches coming in. You graduated UCLA, then you spent a couple of years caddying on the PGA Tour. It's got to be lighter on your shoulders coming back as a coach. <laughs> it is. And um, yeah, caddying was a great time. I was fortunate enough to caddy for a fellow Bruin. Um, Actually, a player that I came in with was the same year, and we spent a few years together out on tour, and it was great. But like you said, the bag was heavy, and I'm excited to drop that down and pick up some new things. And that was Kevin Chappell. Correct. Yeah. Uh, what, what perspective did you gain caddying on the pro tour that you can put into play now as your coaching? Well, I had an incredible insight to the highest level golf in the world and was able to be around the best players in the world on a daily basis and get inside their heads and see what they do, see what makes them so good, and kind of also see the paths, how they got there. See them off the golf course, and just a wide, a wide range of, of things that you would never normally see otherwise. When you compare your experiences as a player and now as a caddy, what do you anticipate your experience to be like as a coach? How do you think your UCLA experience being a student athlete here and living the dream, how do you think that that's going to help you when you go to coach your guys? Well, I think it's a huge advantage because I've gone through it all here and I know exactly what works and what it takes to be successful as a Bruin and I've seen what, it, you know, what can detour you and what can take away from that. And so I can absolutely uh, mentor these kids on how to be successful and speak from personal experience. And I think that's a, a huge benefit that I have. Golf is one of the sports where people come into the college experience at a pretty high level. You're not teaching them the basic fundamentals of the game. They are coming in and they're already really good players and they've already had a lot of coaching. What are the challenges for you when players come in? They've got their patterns, they've got their private coaching. No, that's, that, that's great. It's great that you brought that up. Um, almost every single one of the, the kids on the team have their own coaches and have their own not only, not only swing coaches, but a lot of them work with mental coaches and trainers and, and everything else. So the best thing we can do as coaches is work with the coaches and trainers that they already have 
and develop, keep them on the same path that brought them here. Because like you said, they, they're coming in at such a high level. We're not just trying to maintain that. We're trying to push them forward and bring them to the next level. And we can only do that by working with them and pushing them as hard as we can. Three of your current guys were selected to play in the U.S. Amateur, which I'm sure is an incredible accomplishment. What do you think that kind of experience at that stage is, can they bring back to the team here at UCLA and help everybody excel? Well, anytime these guys get to play a USGA event, which is the highest level event that these guys can play, play at, it's the same organization that does the U.S. Open, and they work closely with the PGA Tour and all the other majors. So what they're gaining from that event is they're seeing golf at its highest level. They're seeing a golf course at its toughest stage. And it's, it's an entirely different game when you're playing at that level. And the margin for error is so small. And the level you have to execute every shot at is very high. And so what they, what they can bring back from that and teach the rest of the team is, is really what the next level looks like and what they're going to have to go through in order to succeed at the next level. Your official season doesn't start until the spring, but there's a lot of activity going on in the fall for golf. You've got some tournaments coming up. Tell us about the, the fall preparation. Well, we have a full fall schedule, and um, our fall tournaments are phenomenal, probably the, probably the, the best we've ever had. Um, now, being that we actually start tournaments before school starts, it, uh, it can get a little cramped, but we have the guys coming in. Um, on September 10th, and we're leaving for qualifying, so we're going to get that started. We're going up to Cordoval. We're, we're actually hosting our event later in the fall, so they're going to get some experience on that course, and we're going to start identifying um, who the traveling team is going to be and see who's playing well and uh, get as much practice and evaluation in before our first tournament as we can. You're not just looking at scores, are you? You're looking at how people handle pressure. There's a lot that goes into it. Absolutely. It, every, fa every factor is is considered and um, obviously scores being the most important thing because at the end of the day we have to add them up and that decides who wins but um, yeah their ability to you know hold themselves up under pressure and play different golf courses and travel and keep up with their schoolwork and I mean that's that's everything that's the whole package that's why college golf is what it is. So we're talking about players holding up under pressure and I have to say that I've tried to play golf and it's incredibly frustrating I, I don't like things that I'm not good at, and I know it takes a long time to get good at golf. And now that you're looking forward to make sure that you're mentoring these guys, how do you ensure that they don't get frustrated like I do when they mess up or that they don't get stressed out under the pressure? The, the best thing we can do to make them hold up and not get frustrated is just to prepare pro properly. That's, that's all we can do. And if they're going into every event with knowing that they've prepared as much as they can, usually it, it sets aside a little of frustration. Most of the time in golf, we see the frustration come out of players who aren't 100% prepared for the situation they're in, haven't necessarily seen or experienced the golf course in the right way before they play, and they get unexpected surprises, and that's what can set you over the edge in golf, and I'm, I'm sure you've experienced that yourself. I hated it. I'm not going to lie to you. I hated it. <laughs> so we try to avoid the surprises as much as we can, and our job as coaches is, is to prepare these guys for every possible scenario, and hopefully that sets aside a lot of the pressure and frustrations that they might otherwise see. Well, I know on the PGA Tour, and when you play in the majors, people go out and have the practice rounds, and you, you, know, you might try a putt from 15 different angles the, on the Wednesday before the tournament starts. Do you get an opportunity with the players to do that on the college level? We do. We get one practice round before every event, and it's unbelievably important to be efficient in that practice round because like you said on on the majors and on the PGA Tour guys are playing multiple practice rounds these are courses that some of the veterans have seen for 15 20 years in a row they know the exact setup of the golf course and they know exactly where the pins are going to be and how everything's going to be set up and we don't necessarily we're playing different golf courses different tournaments and so in that one practice round that we do get it is very important for us to be efficient and that's one thing that I'm definitely bringing to the table is from what I've learned the last three years on the PGA Tour, how to prepare, how to look at a golf course and identify how to play it, and really really just figure out in that practice round what the best way to, to play, that golf, play, play the course is in the tournament. As a first year assistant coach, what do you think your biggest challenge is gonna be this first year? That's a good question. I'd say my biggest challenge will probably be some of the stuff in the office and dealing with uh, an administrative role that I haven't dealt with before. I think 
on the golf course, I'm as comfortable and confident as I've ever been, and I fully believe that I can help these guys uh, a great deal. So making sure that I adjust well in the office and stay on top of all my paperwork and deal with that to the best of my ability, I think I'll be just fine. Golf is a year-round sport. It's not a sport that you can just necessarily stop and then pick up and be right on pace where you left off. Do you think this makes young players wary, thinking, oh my gosh, how do I stay on top of my game the whole year? Or do you try to tell them that, hey, this is an, this is an opportunity for constant improvement throughout the year? I think both of those are correct. Um, there's absolutely a way to overplay and play too many tournaments because it is year-round and you could you could uh, play 10, 12, 15 weeks in a row, and some of these guys do over summer. They play as many tournaments as they can, and, and they come in a little tired. So it's important, it's important for them to, to understand that a week off can really help them play their best golf the next week. And that's something we do in, in our scheduling. We try to play as many events as we can, but at the same time, give them enough opportunity to stay on top of their schoolwork and and also keep improving. Um, the time we spend at home is, and, the, and, and back at campus and practicing and going through a normal routine is where we're getting better. And that's where you know, we're trying to really make up and pass the competition. UCLA golf gets to play some outrageous golf courses. I mean, you're surrounded by some of the best <laughs> golf courses in the world here, but a couple of years ago, the Bruins put in an on-campus practice facility. I guess great for working on short game, the stuff that scoring really comes from. How important is it to have the opportunity to go out and take your clubs right on campus and go hit some balls? Oh, it's, it's everything. And uh, Jack and Rodine Gifford um, donated that facility, and we nicknamed it the GIF. And that's an, that's an incredible bonus we have here on UCLA. It's right in the middle of campus and guys can go to go putt on the way to class or chip after class, hang out there before workouts, get school work done, whatever they have to do. And and like you said, there are some great golf courses in the LA area and to even add to that and have some a facility on campus that they can use is is it's everything. Do you worry sometimes about guys playing too much? Um yes and no. If they're if they're playing too much, um and it, and it starts to you know, detour from their game, and we can tell they're tired and they're picking up bad habits, then we'll try to intervene as much as we can. Um, but until it gets to that point, and rarely does it get to that point, we, we promote them playing as much as they can. And a lot of these kids, they love it, and, and they don't, you know, they're, they're still young, and they, don't, they haven't reached that level just yet. So they're, they're excited to improve every day, and that's usually what they do. Brandon, welcome back to campus, and we look forward to seeing the exploits of the Bruin Golf Team this year. Thanks for having me. And we're going to come back with more UCLA Bruin talk after these brief public service announcements. A trophy can be made just about anywhere. But there's one place where champions are made. UCLA, champions meet here. Hi everybody and welcome back to Bruin Talk. It is now time to honor our Student Athlete of the Week. This week we honor Zakia Bywaters as our Athlete of the Week. Off to a great start to the season, she scored in the home opener for women's soccer to beat Illinois 2-0. In the next match against Wisconsin, again she put the ball in the back of the net leading to a 2-0 win. Bywaters is on the Mac Herman Trophy watch list for the highest individual award in intercollegiate soccer. Congratulations, Zakia, and good luck with the rest of the season. If you would like additional information about UCLA athletics, please visit our website at uclabruins.com. And of course, the UCLA website has featured photos of the Pauley Pavilion construction, a very exciting time just around the corner. November 9th, the men play. November 10th, Corey closes women's basketball team will open their season against San Diego State in New Poly Pavilion. And we're very happy to have a member of the women's basketball team joining us, Madeline Brooks. Welcome to UCLA Bruin Talk. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. It's a great pleasure to have you here. There's so much going on. Not only a new building, but really a new and rebuilt team. You get so many players back. This team's going to be really good. Really great, Dave. Great. Um, if you look at a roster, our roster this year, we have so much talent which is so exciting. Um, we need to get to the Sweet 16 and hopefully the Final Four, and we definitely have the means to do that, which is really encouraging. 
A year ago, the Bruins had nothing but bad luck. Injuries all over the place. Gave you a great chance to play. Mm -hmm. You came onto the team as a walk-on. Mm -hmm. What about you did, did, made you believe that you could walk on and play at UCLA? I enjoy a challenge. Um, that's the competitor in me. I'm a very competitive person, and um, Coach Close gave me that opportunity, which was a huge blessing. And with that, I kind of I kind of took it and ran, and um, I worked hard and paid off. Tell us about your off season. We know you're a great three point shooter. Did you work on other aspects of your game? Mm -hmm. Definitely working on um, my handles, bringing the ball up the court, um, dribbling, and just overall getting my feet and my hips set. Um, ready to shoot as fast as I can, um, so when a defender's up on me, I can just launch right in their face. <laughs> Coach Close's first year was your first year this last season, and everyone knows Coach Close as A, being a Twitter fiend, and B, being <laughs> very charismatic and a very caring and outwardly friendly person. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your experience with Coach Close. I know it was her first year. It was a learning experience for the both of you. Definitely. She is one of the most admirable women in my life. Um, she stays true to her word. Um, she wants us all to learn how to be uncommon women, both on and off the basketball court, which I greatly appreciate. Um, I believe that being at UCLA is a great place to grow athletically and um, for the future after my four years here, and Coach Close definitely mentors that in that sense. So I've really appreciated her coaching and her life skills. There's a, it was a whole new coaching staff mm -hmm. next year. Tony Noonan came from Westmont. Jenny Huth, who played college basketball at Colorado, great player. Shannon Perry, you had an all-star coaching staff right. joining Corey Close here at UCLA. Mm -hmm. They had to take some time to get to know themselves as well as to get to know you. But it mm -hmm. seemed, even though the team had so much adversity, this team had just tremendous bonds last year. Definitely. <laughs> we had uh, a lot of adversity, to say the least. Um, our, our best players got hurt. Um, Atonia and Jazz, I think the two that were just huge, um, we missed them in our offense and our defense. But um, the bond with our team last year, we, we made it through a lot of trials that we didn't expect, and we still got some wins and pulled through, and that's why we're, we're all so excited for this next year, because we should be outstanding. You guys played in the John Wooden Center last year, and I, it was an incredible environment. The fans are practically on top of you, mm -hmm. a lot more loud than in Poly Pavilion. But you are going back into Poly Pavilion. Mm -hmm. Tell us about how excited you are to get back into that brand new, spanking, sparkling, <laughs> beautiful building. I'm very excited to have my locker room down there. It's our home. Um, what I really appreciate about UCLA is that the students here love Poly and treat it like our golden like, <laughs> place to like be and um, I think it holds a lot of tradition on our campus and kind of with all that um, I'm really excited to get in there and and have the big screen and have you know all the fans in the seats it'll be great. UCLA women's basketball obviously had a great tradition in the AIAW days you had the Ann Myers teams mm -hmm. Denise Curry national championship banners mm -hmm. that's the goal of the staff to, to build that tradition again and to start putting some banners up in Poly. I agree. And, Let's do it. And the Bruins have really scheduled a very challenging <laughs> schedule this year. Road mm -hmm. trip to Oklahoma, you've got a tournament at St. John's, a couple of day tournament. Mm -hmm. You're facing some of the best. Tell us about the challenge that that kind of schedule brings to the team. If we're going to play the best, we need to train like the best. And I believe my team is doing that right now, um, lifting and conditioning and working out on our own. Um, our girls are on the grind and they're working day in and day out um, and we hope to be working harder, um, definitely harder than other teams in our conference and the other teams we have in our preseason schedule and I believe we're doing that. You mentioned some of the players coming back from injury, Jasmine Dixon who tore her Achilles, you've got uh, Atonia Yingafa who went down in the Tennessee game last year, mm -hmm. Alicia Brewer, transfer from Tennessee, mm -hmm. is eligible this year. All of a sudden this Bruin team that was such a skeleton crew last year, you got a lot of depth. Plenty of depth. <laughs> so as long as we rehab those injuries, just like um, we should be, we should be outstanding. The player of the year in California, Gatorade player of the year, Naira Fields, joins mm -hmm. UCLA. Mm -hmm. And she is a special talent. Tell us what you've been able to see of Naira Fields in these informal preseason workouts. Mm -hmm. um, Naira has the, one of the greatest work ethics. Um, I really appreciate that about a person um, putting the time in. You're going to get the rewards back. And Naira definitely sets that example so young as a freshman. Um, she's very focused and works hard all the time. So she's going to be very instrumental, I believe, in our offense this year. She's already proving herself, um, even through summer workouts, which is huge as a freshman. You're alluding to the summer workouts. You guys are lifting weights. You're running. You know, you're working on your shooting, as you mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. 
Tell us a little bit about your summer schedule. I know not all the athletes stay on campus during summer, but what are your days like? Sure. Um, well, we're all taking classes, so we are lifting three times a week, conditioning twice a week, and then practicing basketball on our own um, with each other. We'll rebound for each other. Um, definitely encouraging each other, getting each other to get in the gym um, and be the best we can. Um, so it's a balance right now, um, rehabbing, getting, getting healthy, which is huge for our team, and um, working out. It's great. <laughs> I got a sense last year, I do the play-by-play -play for your team, so I got a sense really traveling with the team and being around you that your coach is really a no-nonsense coach. She doesn't really tolerate any foolishness, but she doesn't do it in a heavy-handed way. Has the team really bought into the Corey Close philosophy? I think it took a year, Dave, to be honest. I think now um, our whole team is on board. We've had a couple team hangouts with each other, and just our conversation seems a lot more uplifting and like we're going to blend a lot this year. And just like I said, our roster is outstanding just by looking at our skill and our talent and what it's going to take for us to win a championship is chemistry and glue on the court. And um, I really see that being planted now in our relationships this summer, and I hope we carry that through fall and winter. Let's talk about your summer. It's obviously a different summer this year, having some experience mm -hmm. coming back on, um, as a member of a team. Last year, a lot of uncertainty. Tell us what your outlook was like this year as opposed to last. Uh, now I am more confident in my role. Coach Close has definitely instilled a confidence factor in me. Um, she's made it very clear that she wants me here, um, that I can affect the team in my role, what's appropriate for me, and therefore I'm working the best I can to fulfill that for her um, and for my team. So I'm here for whatever, I, however I can help. There was a game last year in Utah where mm -hmm. at one point the Bruins didn't have a player on the bench. You had a couple players who went out during the game with injuries right. and one uh, had, had you know, almost exhaustion from being up in the altitude. Mm -hmm. That's going to be different to not have to have six players go the whole game. Yes. Yes, we're very excited. We have depth and um, hopefully that means wins. <laughs> I want to talk to you a little bit about your own family and how you got into basketball. I know your father, your brother, maybe two brothers, I can't keep track. Um, but I know everyone practically lives and breathes basketball in your household. Does that put any extra pressure on you or do you like having them there? You can go talk to them about basketball and vent. Sure, it fuels my fire. I definitely think that's where I grew my competitive nature for basketball and that's where my love started. And um, I love having that support system. They're not too far away, so they come to all the games and they're, they're huge fans of the Bruins. And um, I really appreciate that about my family. One of the distinctions this year as opposed to last, not only getting back into Pauley Pavilion, but the Pac-12 network is going to show a lot of women's basketball games. Mm -hmm. And that's been maybe a recruiting disadvantage for the Bruins over the year that they weren't getting featured. But now mm -hmm. your games are going to be nationwide. Tell us about the optimism that the Bruins have about getting some kids interested who might be in different parts of the country. Well, I think media coverage will do it, definitely, to get, to get girls here. We're, I mean, we're in Los Angeles, a, a great hub of a social media, and the Pac-12 network is only going to enhance that, which is really exciting. You're from Temecula, not too far from here. You mentioned that your parents come to all the games. Mm -hmm. What made you decide to come to UCLA? Why didn't you want to venture farther out and go to somewhere else, maybe across the country. What made you want to stay closer to home? Definitely considered um, going across the country, but I love UCLA because it's so academically and athletically superior. Um, at the same time, getting an education is very important to me, and um, competing to be a champion is at the same time. So that's why I love UCLA. It's a perfect combination. There's a lot of expectations this year mm -hmm. with, a, with an experienced team, a coaching staff that's been here for a year. How do you temper those expectations and actually do the X's and O's? That's putting hard work in. That's a mental state that you need to conquer, and that's actually taking what we can do and turning it into happening. And I believe that's happening right now. I'm sure you learned a lot as a basketball player last year. What did you learn as a person last year in your first year in college? Coach Close had so much influence um, in that, but I definitely believe that everything happens for a reason and you're placed um, in a special spot for a reason. And I think that I was meant to be here and what, whatever that role means, I'm going to fulfill it to the best of my ability. Um, I love it here and I'm really thankful. You keep talking about how important it is and how, much, how grateful you are for Coach Close to help you grow as a person and nurture you along the way and make sure that you're elevating yourself both off, off the court and on the court. Mm -hmm. How important is it to you that you have a coach that does that? Because I know for me, my head coach here at UCLA did the exact same thing, mm -hmm. and I feel like I was so much better prepared to go out into the world. Mm -hmm. I just want to know how you feel about 
that kind of relationship with your coach. Mm -hmm. When you have a woman like that in your life who's in that position, she's my coach and she's a woman that um, I would definitely love to pick her mind all the time. It's very comforting. At the same time, it fuels my fire. Like I said, she she gets me and she knows how our team works and that only makes you a better competitor and a better athlete and a better student and um, I'm learning a lot from her. Corey Close had the advantage of really being mentored by John Wooden when she came here mm -hmm. as a graduate assistant after her playing career at Santa Barbara. How much is the pyramid of success a part of your team's foundation? Definitely have had plenty of meetings about the pyramid. Um, she breaks down the blocks and she she went over which ones we needed to work on and which ones we're, we're doing well at. Um, and I really appreciate that because John Wooden has been such an influence in my life. Um, I read all of his books and I appreciate his philosophy. And I'm really glad that Coach is implementing that in our play. Madeline Brooks trying to reach competitive greatness with the rest of the Bruins as the women's basketball season just around the corner. Madeline, I can't tell you how much we appreciate you coming in and joining us today. And we're happy that you came in and joined us today. We'll be back next time with another great show. Until then, for Allison Taylor, I'm Dave Marcus saying so long from Westwood. We'll see you soon.